Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Holy Trinity Church. I just have a couple of notices. It's just a reminder, this Thursday at six o'clock is Supper and Cinema. If you'd still like to, to come along and your name isn't on the list, please speak to either Jenny Snag or myself, because I've taken the list down, but we can, we can still add you if you'd like to come. Next Saturday, we need all hands on deck, please. We're having a, a big church clean here. So that's next Saturday at half past nine, if anyone's free. And refreshments will be provided. And my last notice, more details will be um, on the easel in the back, but there is a, a ladies only day uh, next Saturday, which is the 21st of October at the Apex Church, and if people would like to know any more about it, it will be on the easel. And we hope you'll all stay for coffee and a chat after the service. Thank you. Good morning from me too, and I, I want to add my welcome to that of, of Tinica to you all to Holy Trinity Church this morning. Let's sing our first hymn. It's 689, Thy Hand, O God, Has Guided.
I invite you to turn to your orders of service. Let's say the opening responses. From the rising of the sun till its setting in the west, God's holy name be praised. On the lips of children, by babies at the breast, God's holy name be praised. In the visions of the old, in the dreaming of the young, God's holy name be praised. In the banquet hall of heaven and the forgotten corners of our hearts, God's holy name be praised. Let all that has life and breath praise the Lord. Amen. We praise the Lord. We sit or kneel to pray. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll say the Venite responsively. O come, let us sing to the Lord, let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come and be glad. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have moulded the dry land. For he is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. We remain sitting as James comes to read our first two lessons for us. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 25, 25 pick on verses 1 to 9. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you, I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things. Your plans formed of old, faithful and sure, for you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is the city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place. You subdued the heat with a shade of clouds. 
the song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-matured wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-matured wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shrouds that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God, we have waited for him, so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from the Philippians, chapter 4, verses 1 to 9. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge the idea, I urge Sintik to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything be prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your, re your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Finally, beloved, Whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace will be with you. This is with the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand to sing our gradual hymn 649, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is.
do sit down. The Gospel reading comes from Matthew chapter 22. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who'd been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who've been invited, Look, I've prepared the dinner. My oxen and fat calves have been slaughtered. Everything's ready. Come, come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, maltreated them and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed the murderers and burned their city. And he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Therefore, go into the streets, invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. So those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all they found, good and bad, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who wasn't wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot, throw him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grant, O God, that in the written word and through the spoken word, we may behold the living word, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm organising a, a big party next May, as my daughter is going to be 40. And if you've ever organised an important occasion, be that an anniversary or a birthday party or a wedding reception, you'll be familiar with the problems, I'm sure. You try and sort out the date. For me, it's working around everyone's work commitments and then my sister coming over from Australia. And then the venue. There's the whole kind of child-friendly, how should we do with, deal with that? And all sorts of questions. We've got lots of cousins, lots of cousins at different generations. How many of them if any, do we invite? So it's that vexed business of, it's with that vexed business of organising a party that we come to our parable today. We've had a whole series of parables over the last few Sundays, if you've been around. Um, and this is the next in the sequence. It's all about the breaking in of the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. And this time Jesus is presenting it as a royal wedding feast. It's a joyful celebration, a celebration with profound significance. I can imagine those listening imagining themselves invited to a, such a royal wedding. It would be a dream come true, wouldn't it? Yet, in Jesus' story, those to whom the king has sent a personal invitation seem a bit indifferent, and at worst, they're violently hostile. And the king, of course, is outraged at the dishonour shown to him and his son. Now, despite their refusal to attend, the wedding feast isn't called off. The, the king sends his servants further afield, drawing in anyone and everyone. Whatever the merits on the original guest list, of those on the original guest list, now the only qualification needed for coming to the party is just a, a willingness to accept the king's generous invitation. Now, I'm sure most of those listening to Jesus' words, this parable, <coughs> excuse me, would have understood its significance, although its message wasn't comfortable. The wedding party planned by God the king for his son represents the fulfilment, the promise that all the people through the Old Testament have been looking forward to. We heard it in James's Old Testament reading, that promise to send the Messiah to the people, God being with his people. 
and yet his people wouldn't welcome him. Those servants, the slaves who proclaim the king's plans, are the kind of Old Testament prophets. They foretold God, God's purposes, they explained that the Messiah was coming, and yet they were spurned, some were dismissed, some were killed by those to whom they brought the good news. And of course, we know from our vantage point that Jesus, God's son, is facing the very rejection, that same rejection as he tells the parable, a rejection that's going to lead to his death on the cross. And the cross is followed by the resurrection. So God's purposes, like that wedding feast, are not cancelled. God's kingdom has come, but now the grace of the kingdom extends out beyond the Jewish nation to embrace all who will welcome God's Son, no matter who they are. Now, I wonder what you imagine the kingdom of heaven is like. Some think heaven itself is going to be a place of angels and clouds and harps and, and all that. It's not how Jesus imagines it. When he tells this story, he describes it as a wedding party. I don't know if you've ever been part of a, a Jewish wedding party, but they are amazing. I, I've only been to one, but it was quite amazing. Joyful, lots of dancing, lots of drinking, lots of engagement, lots, lots of everything, lots of food. And the brilliant truth for us is that this kingdom has already begun. It'll reach its full potential in heaven, but we're part of it right now. We, like the king, will want to share what we're enjoying with others who want to honour his son. Now, in terms of that engagement, that enjoyment, that sharing, you'll probably be aware that at the moment, the wardens here in this church are and, and the clergy are taking part in a series of meetings with those from St Mary's and St John's Northwood and All Saints Gernard to see to what extent, if at all, it would be good to work together more in the future. And what I'm discovering, and I don't know whether this is true for those of you in the, in the, in the room too, uh, what I'm discovering is that I think what the Archdeacon is actually trying to get us to do is to identify where the gaps are in our ministry, the gaps in each church. I think it's, it's, it's that we're being imp invited to think about our buildings, what they do and what they don't have, our membership, our, the age groups of our membership, what ages we don't represent at all, which ages we represent really quite well. How we move people on our fringes, those who say come to supper and cinema but don't want to do any more than that with us, how we might move them from wanting to be part of supper and cinema, if they would like to, to perhaps coming to Sunday worship with us. And for those of us in church today, those of us who worship Sunday by Sunday, how we might move into a deeper relationship with God through perhaps through daily prayer, perhaps through a, um, attending a group Bible study, something like that. And these gaps in our ministry that we're being invited to recognise and name, these things, I believe, will help us to identify whether as four churches we'd be best off advertising for two full-time paid priests, what we've had before in Andrew who was here and Amanda who was with the other two churches, or whether it would be better for the growing of the kingdom, which is what this parable is all about, this joining together with other people for the joyful feast, whether that growing in the kingdom would be better served by having one full-time priest and other paid people. For example, perhaps a children's worker or a youth leader, an administrator, a curate, all sorts of other people we could consider. This isn't something that we're going to be doing privately. We'll be sharing what we move to, and the PCC will have a, a say, a veto even, before anything is decided. Um, we've had several meetings so far, and we've got more to go before, lots more to go before Christmas. But I think what this parable is saying to us is, it's great for us to meet here, we wouldn't cl class it as a party, 
but there is a joyfulness, I think, about meeting together. And I pray that what we achieve through this process that we're going through at the moment, this will enable us to be, as a Christian community, to, in, to encourage even more people in cows to experience the extravagant generosity that God is giving to us to join his party as grateful guests, guests who wish and long to honour his son. Amen. So now I invite you to stand, um, to turn to your orders of service and stand as we say together the Apostles' Creed. We affirm our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We sit or kneel for our prayers. Begin with the collect for this day. O God, for as much as without you, we are not able to please you. Mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So we now voice our prayers, pray these prayers in our hearts for the church and for the world. Loving God, we pray that you would be with us as we seek together to discern your will for the, our futures whether that's our individual futures or our future as a church community. We pray that you would clear our vision, speak through our prejudices. May we, before anything else, be your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, you understand how much we grieve for the people involved in the Israel-Palestine conflict. And so we come to pray for them. We pray for the people of Israel and Palestine amid the escalating violence. We pray for those killed and injured by rockets from Gaza in southern Israel. May your rod and your staff comfort them. We pray for those who are grieving. May they know your ever-present help. We pray for the protection of those who've been taken hostage by Hamas. As they walk through the dark valley, May they fear no evil. We pray for all the civilians in Gaza. We pray for those in the leadership of Gaza and the leadership of Israel, that you would guide them along right paths, that you would enable them to listen to voices from the wider world community. 
we ask all this in union with Christ and trusting in the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And for ourselves, we pray that our homes and our daily lives be part of your kingdom. That your love would guide us. That we would recognize the honor it is to be invited to your banquet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are, who are sick at this time. Our hearts go out to those who feel the unfairness of suffering and disease. We ask for them the comfort and healing of your love. We thank you that you share our pain and sorrow and give us grace to bear it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those who have died, for those we love and find it hard to live without. We pray that we might share with them the peace you give, the peace over which death has no power at all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Would you stand for the peace? We are the body of Christ. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share that peace with each other. And our offered, offertory hymn is 281, He Who Would Valiant Be.
Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for these gifts we have to offer and for all your goodness to us. We ask that your love surround us, your care protect us, and that we may know your peace at all times. Amen. Let's join together in the prayer of dismissal. May the love of the Lord Jesus draw us to himself. May the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen us in his service. May the joy of the Lord Jesus fill our souls. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm not sure about the appropriacy of this hymn, but it was chosen many weeks ago. It's 169, Fight the Good Fight.